KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. And right now we bring to you Blake Jarwin, and we have a lot of important questions for you. First of all, how do you feel about the chair situation that we've set up? There was a lot of debate <laughs> that went into whether you should stand or get a chair. What are your thoughts? I'll tell you, I've done a few standing up, but by far I, I appreciate the chair being here. I think you guys have done a great job. How much that. percentage better do you think this interview will be because you're seated? At least 150% better. Nice. Oh, my God. That was my idea. So yeah. um, you can thank me. He yeah, wasn't brilliant. that thoughtful, but brilliant. he also wasn't here yet. So. Well, that I will agree to that, but I will take credit for this is I was leading the brigade of the Blake Jarwin fan this club last year and I was telling everybody I was like we've sw- you don't have to comment on this part I was like we've switched offensive philosophies we're going to go to a more modern tight end we're going to stretch the field I was really excited so I will take credit for that fair yes okay now <laughs> you didn't have that year though so Damn. like yeah I didn't mean to bring Damn. the bring everything down Let's here but we we understand what happened how are you feeling since then what's 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 the feeling now yeah um i'll tell you it feels so good to be back out here with the guys um that first day of camp being cleared not having to go to the pup list first uh just to run around and be a part of it um i'd say i've got so much to clean up and every day i'm learning so much uh remembering how to use my body in certain situations um but it's awesome to be back out here uh but you talk about a roller coaster yeah going down um had you know high expectation a high bar a high standard for myself last year and um just, uh, you know, injuries happen in this game, and it's part of it, and just kind of you kind of learn to live with it. What, what was the emotion yeah. like watching the team then, like be, having to be you know, away from them and not, not near them and all that during that time? Yeah, it's difficult. Um, you know, I'd put, I thought I'd had a pretty strong camp going into that, and, uh, like, you know, first game, first half of the first game is pretty tough. Uh, and then just to kind of detach yourself as you get have surgery and you're rehabbing. So you're not in the meetings with the guys. You're not at practice with the guys. It's, it's difficult. Um that's been the first time in my life that I've gone, you know, in a long, long time without having a football season in my life. So, um, but like I said, it's great to be back out here. Well, then I really want to know more from that perspective is were you scared about never playing football again or what the injury was or like walk us through like the immediate aftermath of that? Because like we're in a good place now. But immediately afterwards, I could see how your mind could go all over the place. Yeah, you definitely uh, you do. Um, by the time I got off the field, uh, Dr. Cooper had already told me kind of what was going on. He asked me what happened. I said, I, you know, I felt a pop. He's like, okay, to just be ready. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be an ACL. And so uh, having that reality hit me that quick was pretty difficult. But um, I was never really in fear for my career. Um, I know that our guys do a great job. Cooper's done an amazing job with a lot of athletes who come back stronger than ever. So um, it was just a matter of uh, how can I put my head in a good place to, to push myself to be better than I was before the injury. All right, so Travis Kelsey, uh, oh, Darren that's not Waller, how we say it anymore. Oh, Kels, yeah, Travis Kels, uh, George <laughs> Kittle, uh, then Blake Jarwin. Is that the order for you, or you you have a different order for this? Um, you know, there's been a lot of good tight ends, and they uh, a lot of guys had great uh, great year last year. And like I said, I thought I put myself in a good position with a strong camp last year. But um, uh, right now, the goal is just to be what I need to be for the team. Uh, obviously, I've got a big board at home with a lot of goals in mind for myself. Um, I'll keep those to myself, but uh, I, you know, I have high expectations. We'll There's see. a lizard on the ground right now, <laughs> right there. Uh, Kevin, could you catch that? Do you think you could? Hundred percent. Okay, and he could catch it because he's a tight end. And he catches footballs, but you, on the other hand, I have questions. Well, about. I'm not supposed to go down those steps. Yeah, that's right. We can't do that's, it. Right. So that's why right. I can say a hundred percent because there's no <laughs> way I can be called on that. And okay, Blake, can you tell us what just happened right in front of you? I know you saw that. Yeah, I don't know. Some bug came flying down from the sky, upside down. Um, some kind of beetle looks like. Oh, oh, and the oh my get god! It this is live coverage of a lizard, perhaps eating that flying thing. Here? This is really gonna. Oh happen. my god! Where the hell is Ted to get this video? This is the great. Oh. 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 All right. Well, there you go. Okay. What an interesting interview this already is. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now. I saw how that happened. That flying whatever it was is drunk because it smashed <laughs> into the little yellow bar there, and that it like had a fender bender, and that the lizard was like the cop right there. I swear, all of this happened. That doesn't happen if I'm standing up, though. So, so that's absolutely. a good point. Absolutely. So we're already getting close to that 150 <laughs> percent. What did you think about the vibe on? Because like things are much quieter here without a practice today. What did you think about the vibe on Saturday? Because not many franchises can put that 
together like the Cowboys. And not many franchises can have 80% of the fans, even though you're in the home state of the team you were practicing against. What did you think about that SoCal showdown, as people are calling it? Yeah, that was pretty uh, – it's pretty cool. Uh, obviously, uh, being a part of the Dallas Cowboys, we've got such a wide fan base across the state. Um, it's awesome. Um, we come here and we fill these stands, you know, for sure on the weekends and during the weekdays they're still pretty full. So – uh, it's awesome to kind of have that support, especially down here. Um, and, man, it was awesome. That was kind of my first action back at it with the team against me, and um, that was a lot of fun. All right, I, I want to kind of walk through something real quick. There was a touchdown that you had, and I think you you might be remember the exact play. You might remember everything about it. But there was a moment where you waved your hands and you pointed to an area, and it, was it Washington maybe? And Dak was like, oh, yeah, I see it now too. And then, bam, touchdown, immediately happened. Uh, how how – how, typical is it of a quarterback to be that responsive to the other guys and not be like no this is i'm running this thing and and is that communication open with you guys all the time yeah uh we've got a you know a few periods of practice where we kind of imp- it's kind of like an improvised version where it's a it's a scramble drill so the quarterback's kind of running and uh we're just responsible for finding open areas and, and Dak does a great job the rest of the quarterbacks do a great job of just finding what's going on on the field and seeing who's open and just making a play so that's I think that's a pretty unique part of our uh, practices when we do that. We just kind of stop everything and just start running around. And, uh, you know, you kind of feel like a kid again when you, that happens because the, the play breaks down and uh, you just let's find somewhere to, to run to and uh, catch the ball, hopefully. Now, I know you obviously have made it to the professional level, but how concerned are you about your alma mater and what conference they're going to end up in when the Big 12 falls apart without two of their marquee schools? I'm very interested to see what's going to happen here. Uh, I have no doubt um, Oklahoma State's got a, you know, we've got, we're, we're a great university. Uh, we compete in, you know, all sports across the, the line. Um, and we're competitive in a lot of those sports. So I'm not really worried about it. I'm interested to see where we land. Uh, I keep reading the Pac-12 is probably looking pretty. What do you think you know, about that? I don't know. We'll see. Um, you know, the one bad thing about that, I guess, is you're traveling to the West Coast constantly. Yeah. Um, and that can take a toll with all those long rides. But uh, I know Coach Guy's doing a great job with those guys. Um, I've kept up with those guys for at that, their start of camp, and so I'm excited to kind of see. I actually saw the receivers doing a drill. Uh, and I'm very close with Coach Dunn, the now offensive coordinator. I, I texted to my tight ends coach and said, Coach, I want to incorporate this because I think it's a huh. great drill. So, um, And I think they do a great job there with their guys. Let's say I was the commissioner of the SEC and I was willing to listen. Give me give me your pitch for Oklahoma State. <laughs> well, uh, well, I'm not going to get into it too much. Um, <laughs> that's, that's not going to sound good go down for that, you. That, that road, but, uh, you know, I, like I said, I don't. I have no doubt we'll find a good place, a good home. Um, we'll see what happens with the Big Twelve in general. I guess we talk a lot about the 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 new era, the the positionless basketball, and the tight end position has changed a lot. I would say oh, like yeah. the last five years, even uh, it's a becoming more less, less blocking. Let's go be a, a receiver. And I think Gundy has had a lot to do with that because they were running and throwing the ball all over the place. Is that the still the mindset that Kellen Moore has for what you guys are doing is y'all are first option sometimes or, you know what, your last option, but we're doing a lot more receiving. Yeah, uh, Kellen's a great offensive mind. He does a great job with us. Um, we've got a very versatile group of tight ends in our room, uh, and uh, I love, you know, going up against Schultz at daily. Uh, I think that we bring a competitive nature to each other. Uh, we bring different kinds of off or, you know, we play differently, t- different play styles. Um, but we're both able to do both things in the game. So uh, obviously being a tight end, the run game is always going to be an important part and you have to do your job. But to, to be able to open it up and be, uh, you know, an important part of the pass game is awesome too. So and I think we do a great job and Kellen's doing a great job putting us in good spots. It's in- interesting because you, you talk about Schultz and like he did well last year. Did like, very well. I think, uh, I think his numbers were almost identical to Witten's last season as a Cowboy. Mm-hmm. And he, he seemed very reliable. I think early on there was a, there was a, a defense, offensive holding in the first game and then there was like a drop pass. But after that, he really did step up. Is there – is there a real competition for the starting position, or is this like is it, you just trying to make it difficult for Kellen Moore? Uh, you know, I don't look at it as you know who's going for the starting spot. We're both going to have our, our plays on the field, um, and like I, I could sit here and talk good about Schultz all day long. The way he approaches the game is incredible. The way he practices the game is incredible. Uh, but it's our job to push each other every single day, so that come game day we're ready to roll and we're we're going at a high you know a very high level. So. Um, 
we're both ready for it. Uh, we love, you know, like I said, that competitive nature we bring to each other on the practice field because at the end of the day, we want the Dallas Cowboys to be the best, and to do that, we have to push each other. Does that make it easier maybe off the field to be friends with people like that when it doesn't feel like as much of a direct competition? Oh, I've, yeah, yeah. Me and Schultz, uh, we're great friends. Uh, man, I love that guy. Uh, like I said, when we're, we we test each other all the time in the meetings, rooms, and things like that, but afterwards – uh, we're playing cards at night, and we're we're just chilling. Whatever we're doing, we're just hanging out. So it's uh, it's awesome to have a friend like that. Can you imagine being in as many meetings as we hear they're in all the time, <laughs> right. and hating somebody that's right next to you? <laughs> like just feel like, oh god, I don't want to have a meeting with this guy again. What kind of cards? Is it uh, poker? Or? It's like a version of gin rummy. I'm not really sure. Okay. Schultz is kind of introduced it to me but it's a lot of fun sounds like oh, he's so, still learning and schultz okay is probably so thinking, the other yeah, <laughs> i think that's how it is new rules happen all the time but no i'm just kidding <laughs> yeah oh no you couldn't play that card right here right, right, sorry. Yeah. sorry sorry to hear that three points for me <laughs> so what what do you think is the evolution of or what do you hope to see in the next month in terms of evolution of the team and evolution of yourself because we're a month out from the start of the season yep. do you have like i would like to see this three weeks out this two weeks out or how does that go for you yeah i think uh you know we've had a, a solid camp so far and now it's kind of the time to start tuning it in a little bit right we've put in all of our offense uh you know we'll have a few new things along the way but now it's time to tune in lock in and see you know just play the game that we want to play during the season and uh like you said we got a month left so it'll be it'll be a while before we're, we're really ready so um but i think we're on a great path uh coach mccarthy's done a great job of getting us to where we need to be at this point and i know kellen and coach will do a great job to, to continue to get us there you have you have zeke you have amari and all these options at receiver you have all these different offensive options do you feel like well when do we get ours or is is it more of whatever that defense is that's going to dictate how we can get ours today absolutely yeah like you said we've got an, an incredible receiving core incredible backfield incredible quarterback uh it's going to be a lot of fun i think there's going to be opportunities all over the field and uh, it's just our job to be ready for those opportunities when they present themselves so um it'll be interesting to see how teams kind of approach us and uh, how they decide to to go against us and um, i think like i said i think there'll be plenty of opportunities around the board if you were a cornerback which wide receiver would you not want to cover because you feel like you'd get embarrassed i don't want to cover any of those guys (laughs) that's a good answer that That is is a a good answer single one (laughs) so We talked about this back little area here where those stands are. Now, there are some easier things to pronounce, like Oxnard and Ventura and everything like that. How do you suppose you uh, pronounce the next one after Ventura? Because we've been having some heavy debate about this. I've looked at that all camp. I'm like, I don't know. Port. Port. Uh, it's not Hinnom. It could be Hinnomay. We think it could be Hinnomay. Hinnomay. <laughs> Nobody's. No, nobody actually. Our has producer's an going to run so out and tell us the answer. Yes. But I bet Hard Knocks producer would know. Yeah. What is that? That's a good. Have you noticed a discernible difference in media coverage with Hard Knocks being out here? Or y'all get a lot of media coverage anyway? Does it feel kind of like that's about the same? It's pretty pretty normal. Um, but there is just an added. You know, a little bit extra. There's kind of extra people running around, I guess you could say, around us. Um, it's definitely interesting to have that around. Um, but, you know, I'm excited about it. I know that a lot of fans would love to have a Dallas Cowboys hard knocks and to get that for them. And just know that inside peek of how our daily lives are through camp will be pretty cool. It's about to start. Is it going to be a must? <laughs> he laughed. He's like, yeah, I know. Trust it, me. Is we have it... a popcorn party ready to go. <laughs> is there going <laughs> Is there going to be like a team watch, or do you think this is a must watch for the team? Uh, I'm not sure kind of how that's going to go. Um, you know, I, I know my family's excited to watch it. Um, you know, I hope I make them proud on there and I don't <laughs> <laughs> get a text from my grandma about something that I might have said. I but, uh, like that. Yeah, uh, you know, it's 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 like I said, it's cool. It's unique for the fans to kind of get into that. Obviously, we know what we do day in and day out, so it'll be nothing new to us. But um, it is it's awesome. Would you be surprised if Schultz was like, "Hey, surprise game! Uh, we're going to play during this instead of watching it together." I would love to hear Liev Schreiber go. But Schultz has taken the rules into his own hands. And, like, and then you see him switching it up every time. I think that would be awesome. All right. Well, we appreciate it very, very much, man. Thanks for Absolutely the time. Good. Do you think, like, it was 150% better? Oh, I think it... so. Absolutely. With the action we had over here, I mean, you could... Okay, just real quick. Can you tell people often. what happened so they don't think we made that up? Yeah. There was obviously a lizard over here. A drunk beetle hit the pole, <laughs> fell down. The lizard then tried to think that it could eat the bigger beetle. Yes. Mm-hmm. And as it approached it, the beetle finally flew off and lived. But um, 
Man, that was awesome to kind of see. The Beatles sobered up real fast. Yeah, he yeah. Did. <laughs> you got a future in play-by-play. Yeah, you if, do. <laughs> if, when, when all of this wraps up, thank you very much, Blake Jarwin, right here on 105.3 The Fan. Thanks, guys.